My name is uh, Trip Williamson. I'm a junior ag major, and I did an internship over the summer at Kelly Farm and Grain Company. Um, some background on the farm is located in Atlanta, South Carolina. Uh, it's family owned and operated, it has been for a while. Um, the owner is William Kelly, and he is a predominantly a grain farmer. He does corn, soybeans, wheat, oats, cotton. He just started cotton this year. He was sharecropping it. And I think this is going to be last year because he didn't do so well. Um, it's a 3,000 plus acre farm that he runs and it's rotational. So he's got a pretty good bit of work going on. Um, this is just a pictures of the equipment sheds. Um, he's got three equipment sheds. I only got pictures of two. Uh, this is the combine he uses, brand new. Um, I forgot the model. He's got the two combines, um, a couple of 7400s, and a 8420 over here that's used for planting. Um, and he's got his own spreader trucks and uh, a few other odds and ends that he uses. Um, every day after, <coughs> after work, the equipment will get washed and uh, put back under the shed or washed, rinsed off just to keep everything nice and neat and less maintenance required. Um, my job description, uh, I've planted and drilled soybeans from the first day I got there. Uh, he asked me if I'd ever been on a drop there. I was, yeah. So uh, about 10 minutes after I showed up, he put me in a truck and took me to the drop there and put me on the uh, soybean drill. Um, I had to maintain the grass around the pivots, which was weed eaten, and that was almost once a week, um, just to keep the snake problems down. There's a bunch of rattlesnakes around there. Um, maintain shop yards. Um, whenever we started cutting corn, I had to uh, haul the corn and our corn from the fields and. I had to move some soybeans around, and I had to uh, do that as well. Um, maintain the maintenance on tractors and other equipment, uh, which was a regular, regular job, especially after every use, as much as we used everything. And towards the end, I had to bush hog the cut corn fields. <coughs> um, this is a picture of the the uh, combine cutting corn. Um, last year the it was very bad uh, for corn. We didn't get much rain around there, and uh, <coughs> anything that wasn't under the pivots were produced very low yields, uh, averaging from anywhere from zero to 15 bushels per acre, which is nothing in corn. Um, but under his pivots, he averaged anywhere from 140 to 200 plus, which uh, he looked down on that. Um, this is a picture of the unloading process at the field. They own three 18 wheelers, uh, two hopper bottoms, and uh, one dump bed, which is right here. And we usually kept two to three. Uh, trucks in the field at one time just to keep the, the operation going smoothly um, and one of those trucks usually consisted of uh, a small international dump bed truck that uh, I drove <coughs> just to uh, catch short loads uh, to keep the, these 18 wheelers off the road as much as possible because there's only a handful of people that could drive them because they're old and uh, tricky. <laughs> but, let's see what else. All right, uh, the bush hogging, this is what I did 
towards the end of the summer, which was um, one of the most boring jobs I've ever had. This, this cuts roughly six rows across, um, and the speed isn't all that high because he wants to get everything cut down so he can get a clean burn down afterwards. Um, and there was no radio in the tractor, so that's not For how many hours was that your view? Uh, count, uh, two minute <laughs> account. It was from seven o'clock till seven at night, seven in the morning till seven at night. I was in the tractor an hour off for lunch, and it was uh, pretty miserable. Uh, this is the back view of it, and this is a separate field, but it's, like I said, it was a miserable job. Um, this is just a picture of some random equipment. He's got uh, the service truck, which uh, was my primary vehicle whenever I wasn't on the tractor. It's got uh, the welder, the uh, torch, settling torch, um, air compressor, and you can't see it, but it's got a 150 gallon uh, fuel tank all the way across the back that, uh, for filling up tractors. And it's just got random toolboxes and just a whole everything. Uh, this was a, a 4730 um, self-propelled sprayer that uh, with an 80 foot boom. This is the primary uh, spraying uh, equipment they use. He only had one and it did everything pretty efficiently. Uh, he only had to pull out one other old sprayer um, during one week of the summer to use. But uh, there was one guy that stayed on this pretty much throughout the whole summer. He called it his office. Um, uh, this was one of the hardest days that I had to deal with. It was uh, under one of the irrigation pivot, or the fields under a pivot, and I uh, this guy, we told him, don't go in the field, don't go in the field. If it's, you start to slip, there's a two-wheel drive tractor. Um, I pulled him out seven times throughout that day, and he kept going back. And on the eighth time, he called me, and he was in a ditch. And he ripped the tractor, the side of that tractor to pieces, and we had to pull him out and tore up the bush hog, and he pretty much, um, put me in charge after that. Um, the other side was Kelly Grain Company. Um, this is where I worked when things were slow on the farm. It's owned by, or it's still family owned, and it's managed by Mr. Williams' brother, uh, David Kelly. Um, here, I had to unload customers' grain, or the grain trucks that they brought in. Uh, sweep grain bins, which is climbing in and putting a bin sweep in and cleaning them out basically. Uh, spray grain bins for weevils and maintain uh, maintenance on bin fans and uh, I mean bins and fan motors. Um, and if anybody has ever been in a bin, you know it's, it's extremely hot, um, especially during the summer. And uh, that was a, a little bit of stress. Um, here's a picture of the hydraulic grain truck lid. Um, this basically works uh, for trucks that don't have PTO dumps on them. There is a control panel back here beside the pit that uh, lifts the truck up and it dumps it into the pit to run it up to the elevator and disperse it to whichever bin you need to go to. This is an old piece of equipment, but it works very well. Uh, and that's, that's an underground sure. pit with right. like a grate over. It's one of these guys that hadn't seen one. Yeah, but uh, it's about <coughs> six foot deep and <coughs> more. And everything dropped drop down to about that level 
and then runs through the elevator. Um, but this was a big help. It was a little slower than than uh, the other PTO dumps, but it still was easier than uh, having to shovel everything out. And uh, this is a picture of the whole um, grain company again. And this picture doesn't really do it justice. Uh, it's, it's huge. I just couldn't get a full picture. I destroyed my phone over the summer while I was cutting grass at my boss's house and ran over it twice with a lawnmower. So I didn't have all the pictures that I had from the beginning. Um, I had some from the top and everything else. But uh, we had a lot of problems here. I get called off of work to get off a tractor for big maintenance problems. We had a, a thousand bushel bin bust and I had to sweep it up. I mean, it was full of wheat. I had to get a, a PTO driven cyclone vacuum cleaner and uh, pick everything up. It split from the bottom. It was horrible. But uh, and This is the side view. Um, I'm under the shed right here, but uh, that's about it.